If you go on Amazon and search for a laptop, then sort by price, lowest to highest, the cheapest option is $146. Then if you go, that's not low enough, and you fire up AliExpress, it's about 127 US. But what if I told you that you can get a fully functional laptop for just 99 US dollars? You might say to me, gee Linus, surely there's some kind of catch. And you'd be one smart shopper because while this thing is truly a fully functional laptop for $99, it's got one heck of a gotcha. Let's take a look at it, shall we? So this is the Pinebook. It comes from the single board computer company Pine64 and on first glance looks like basically every other uh, you know, MacBook design ripoff from 2008. Uh, it comes in a couple of flavors. So ours is the 11.6 inch version that comes with an IPS display and then there's a separate 14 inch version that's got a TN panel instead. What's nice about the 14 inch version is that it does have a bigger trackpad, thinner bezels, and pretty much a full size 10 keyless keyboard while this one is actually quite squished. So it's got a short backspace button. It's got these pinner little arrow keys. You'd probably get used to that. What you won't get used to is the shifts. Now this one, I think this short left shift is actually standard somewhere. I will never move to that country, sorry. Uh, but this one, how are you supposed to get used to that? Uh, overall, the the feel of the keyboard is actually surprisingly good. Like I've seen laptops that cost three, four, five times this much that have more flex to their keyboard overall. So I'm, there is some to be clear, but it's really not that bad. The thing weighs about a kilogram and then it's got a 0.3 megapixel camera up here at the top. IO is actually pretty reasonable for 2019 standards. Micro SD expansion, headphone, microphone, combo, three and a half millimeter jack, USB type A, which is nice to have. Another one of those, uh, DC input. So no USB type C, come on guys. And then due to the low profile of the machine, we're stuck with a mini HDMI, which in fairness gives us HDMI output, which is good, but, um, is very likely to break. Uh, this is really not a very robust connector. Uh, in terms of the internal specs, should we, should we open this thing up? Let's have a look at it. Let's do that. And there it is. Oh, 1.2 gigahertz quad core ARM Cortex A53 64 bit processor, two gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, 16 gigs of eMMC memory. I'm just kind of pointing vaguely at this small board because it's, it's, it's all on here. And then we've got wireless uh, N with Bluetooth 4.0. And you can see your antennas are hooked up over here. Also of note is our spectacular stereo speakers. And uh, oh yeah, look at this. You can kind of see everything in here. So here's our magnet for the, uh, for the top cover to keep it closed. There's your microphones. Does have dual microphones. So like an array microphone. Enough foreplay though. Let's find out just how much laptop you get for 99 bucks. Give her a sec. Now that we're booted, we're looking at a KDE Neon Linux desktop. Uh, we see that there's actually no uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi support. So just 2.4 gigahertz. That's kind of to be expected on something this low spec. Pause for a second. Yep. With wanna... this, uh, OS, can we turn the brightness up? We can't. Do you want to come in a little closer? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. The ooh, web page loading time is not spectacular. It's hard to say how much of the slow experience we're having right now is software and how much is hardware though, because the Pine64 guys acknowledge that this build of KDE Neon is quite out of date. Like it's got tons of issues. Like the fact that it takes forever to move the cursor across the screen. Uh, you can't adjust the display brightness. 
But then on the other hand, the CPU in this thing has a MIPS score of about around 11,000, which puts it somewhere in the neighborhood of Sony's PlayStation 3 in terms of performance with the GPU. It's actually a Mali 400 MP2, which gives it about the performance of the original Xbox. So I'm not even, were you expecting this, James? I'm not even able to load YouTube.com. Fortunately, our journey doesn't end here though, because the good folks at Manjaro have a specific build of their OS that you can load up using Etcher on a micro SD card and boot to that instead, which I think we should probably do right about now. Oh, it's still slow. <laughs> but it's brighter, right? Yes. Yes, it is. So now that we're in, let's see if our brightness adjustment works now. Hey! All right, so this is already a better experience, but with the better trackpad and the brighter display. Let's see if YouTube even manages to load at all. Okay, this is a lot better. But I think the question that we need to answer now is, okay, let's say that I'm willing to learn to use Linux. Is this usable? So I'm gonna get logged into my Gmail, um, maybe get some LibreOffice on here. Um, Try and watch some YouTube videos. Let's see. Volume at 100%. I can't hear it at all. Okay, so this is weird. After some dinking around in the audio settings, we found that we can change our maximum volume to 150%. So why don't we try that first? Nothing. Oh, maybe we can change. Hey! Wow, that's really quiet. Okay, so a couple problems. Um, the fact that it was configured to use the wrong audio device out of the box. Not the end of the world. That's the kind of thing that you can fix pretty quickly, but it's got some other issues. So it does technically have stereo speakers, but it figures this is the front right speaker and this is the front left speaker. You can actually hear it coming out of this one when I press. Right. Issue number two is that at 100% volume in both the application and the device, it's way too quiet. And if we crank it to 150%, well, it sounds like this. That's gonna be pretty cool. Now I wanna talk about the size. So... In fairness to it though, if I was using headphones, the YouTube playback is actually pretty reasonable, although we aren't at HD yet. So let's try 720p. We are dropping a lot of frames here. Okay, let's go back to 480p. Even 480p in full screen mode chugs. If your objective is purely just to watch YouTube videos and absorb the information, it, you can do it. Let's uh, fire up email or something then. I'm not gonna lie guys, this is not a great experience. Uh, even just performing a search in Gmail. So I just clicked an email, let's give her a hot, second here. So this is like a cached page. Let's go back. Really? <laughs> really? It's still loading. So at this point, I think it's pretty clear that the hardware in here is not really daily driver ready. Um, and by the way, if you were thinking, oh, well maybe I could just play like ancient games on it or something, unfortunately, because it's got a Mali GPU and the Mali drivers are not open source, well, 3D acceleration's pretty much not available on any Arch-based images like Manjaro. Uh, the Lima drivers are like a reverse engineered driver, but they're not complete. So you could install them on the Pinebook, but you'd have to recompile the kernel first and it frankly would not be a good experience at all. Anyway, it's not something that we'd recommend. Our final project for this is to actually try to install Windows. Now, as we mentioned before, this is an ARM-based CPU, but Microsoft has been working on ARM versions of Windows for over half a decade now. Remember the Surface RT? Yeah, it was a long time ago. So, we're gonna give it a shot. Maybe see if Windows can save this experience. <laughs> so to do this, and this is our first attempt at this actually, this is the one thing we didn't prep before the video, uh, we used a tool called the Windows on ARM Deployer and an image that's actually intended for use with the Raspberry Pi, which is also ARM-based, but 
isn't a pine book, so uh, we're really not sure if this is gonna work. Only one way to find out. So what we're trying to do right now is figure out how to get it to boot to this, because when we threw Manjaro on a microSD, it just automatically booted to it, but now it's not doing that. I tried F2, I tried F8, I tried F10. Actually, F11. F11 makes an appearance once in a while. Let's try delete. Come on, baby. Try F1. I need help. Ah, uh, something's happening. Oh, God. Given how utterly unsuitable this is for daily driver use, and the fact that our initial attempts to install a Raspberry Pi build of Windows didn't work, um, we decided to abandon it because the reality of it is Pine64 flat out says what this is not for. This is not a device to use as your current work or school laptop. And if that's what you're after, you probably need to look elsewhere. What it's really intended for is as a low cost, all in one solution for ARM Linux and BSD developers that are looking to mainline the SOC or are interested in some part of it, like the GPU, for example. One example is the Lima project. So that's not to say that there's no potential for something like this to achieve low cost daily driver status in the future. In fact, the upcoming Pinebook Pro could be a better daily driver. It's gonna be 200 rather than $100. It's based on the RK3399, so it's a hexa-core SOC, six cores with two A72s at two gigahertz, four gigs of RAM instead of two, 14-inch IPS panel, magnesium alloy body instead of a plastic one, USB-C. So in summary, this thing isn't what we hoped it was, and that shouldn't be a surprise because they told us that it wasn't what we hoped it was, but if you clicked into this and you're disappointed now because you were like, oh, I was really kind of hoping for a $100 laptop option, we did manage to find a couple other things that look a bit more compelling. So this cheap Windows machine over on Walmart is just 140 bucks. It's got a touchscreen, it's a convertible, and it's only got 32 gigs of storage. So it's likely that Windows Update will eventually be the death of it but it does look fairly usable for the price. And this Chromebook over on Newegg is a bit more expensive. It's over $200 and it's a Chromebook, so you're gonna have software limitations. Finally, the third option, as we always love to bring up anytime someone's on a budget, is picking up something used. A lot of the time you can get a used laptop somewhere like eBay or Craigslist or Kijiji, let go, wherever, for much cheaper than you could get something new, especially if you're looking at Windows machines or Chromebooks as opposed to a MacBook or something. Those things hold their value incredibly well. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured, as long as you are the intended audience, at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.